But it is one of those things that it's built off of others. This is the part where chemistry gets into what everybody typically looks and believes that chemistry is. Chemical formula. You have finally made your way to where we can finally talk about real deal, ideal chemistry, things going on around us. And how we do this is something we call chemical reactions. Now this is the thing. This is the calm before the storm. It's kind of like, you know how, uh, if you don't know this, you can get alerted today. So it's kind of like with a hurricane that you have the first wave comes in, and then when you're in the eye of the storm, it's completely calm. And then the back wall comes in. We have now entered into the eye of the storm. So this is going to be easy, is what you're trying to say. And then it's going to hit us all like a freight train. Yes. Because what's going to come in to happen is you got to get this. You got to get this so you can get stored geometry. So, <laughs> the entire year, the only thing I've heard Ivory say is, I don't need this class. <laughs> Ivory, I'm so happy you're in here. Okay, so in this. I love physics. It's just something about that class. All right, so here's the thing with these chemical reactions. Remember, as we're going through all this, we're in the eye of the storm. Like so we got to get focused, get this down, so that you'll be successful with this stored geometry. Because there's nothing that brings more joy to my heart than for every one of you in this class to get an A on the stored geometry quiz. If you did that, I personally promise you and guarantee you, I'm going to send out letters to people and say, in your face, my kids are smart. It's not. If all of y'all get an A on a story geometry quiz, make it like the class average of 70 or something. You know what your class average on the last quiz was? <laughs> not very good. What was it? 33%. Jeez. Okay, our class average has to be 34%. No way. Yeah. I no. All right, so with that, we gotta get pace, we gotta get going. So in this, chemical reactions take place. It's literally something that's happening around you constantly. There's chemical reactions happening within you right now. Everything there's always a chemical reaction taking place. Continue on, always. If something went wrong, we would walk No. If something went wrong, you would die. That's what we call that. So, in this, there's indications, okay? These are basic indications that you can see within the lab that a reaction took place. So, let's talk about indications. I don't want you to say indications here, not indicators, because you're going to learn about that later on in the acids and bases, and you just, yeah, you can't do that. So indications of a chemical reaction. And so that you guys know, that right there is practically how I will abbreviate chemical reaction. CHM is the abbreviation for chem. You'll learn that in college. And every time you see that on your... Schedules. And then RXN is what we abbreviate with reactions. So the first one, there's three that we're just going to cover in this class and talk about. So the first one, you all are used to it and you've seen it. Some of you are probably using them sometime here recently. There is a release of heat. That was funny. Okay. Or light. It can be and or. Okay. So a release of heat or a release of light. So in this, 
Everybody in here, I don't care how old you are, you still enjoy these. Glow sticks. Glow sticks. They are the coolest thing ever. Literally all it is is there's two liquids within the glow stick. Okay? In there, whenever you're snapping and breaking it, you're breaking a little capsule in there that releases the one solution inside the capsule to the solution that is just hanging out in the stick. And it literally, the reaction takes place and it releases out a glow. Let's do it. Ouch. <laughs> well, I wouldn't eat it. I'm out and eat it. But well, there you go. Apparently not that toxic. But I still wouldn't do it again. I'm more one to put it on. Okay. Anyway, so there's one option. <laughs> Okay, glow sticks. And you've also, this is where recently you've probably used one that releases heat. Y'all know those hot hands? Love those things. Oh, those things are wonderful. You Save shake them together. Save yourself. They're so warm. These are the best things ever in cold football. That's right. See, in this, that reaction, there's a reaction whenever you smack them and shake them together. Two chemicals are combining together and it releases off heat. It's special called an exothermic reaction. Okay. Hopefully we'll learn about those. We get to the gas laws, we're all learn about So you got the release of heat or light. This is an indication that a reaction took place. You have a second one. Number two, which is going to be really funny for what was said earlier. No. Production of a gas. So I'm pretty sure Connor said this and then Olivia was like, it's gross. So I'm just going to go with it. Perfect example is like, you know how you can eat some really high protein stuff, and then you got some atomic. <laughs> I mean, it's like drop dead. You gonna clear out a room? Gross. Okay. There is a chemical reaction going on inside your body, and one of this, that nasty fart that they be dropping on you, is horrible. Which brings up an incredibly awesome story. I'm gonna say this even though. Ladies in the room, y'all got uh, y'all girls will probably enjoy this, especially the guys. So me and my cousin, uh, Aaron Rollins, we graduated together. So uh, our junior year, we helped build prom here, and it's the Alice in Wonderland prom. So to store a lot of the stuff, we had to store it in the tech ed room. To do that, you know how you got those two doors that you walk in, and then it closes in this passageway, and then you got to open another set of doors. Well, we was carrying some huge clock in there, and I had to fart that. <laughs> and the door shut behind me, and when the door shut behind me, I just let it go, and it's so silent. It's absolutely, I will, I will, this will be online, you can choke. <laughs> ask Aaron, like, you can ask Aaron about it. It's, it his reaction's hilarious. He has no idea, because he's backing in. <laughs> so we're going in. Oh, I'm like, that's going to be atomic. <laughs> we go through the second set of doors and it shuts. We come back through. As we come back through, he takes two steps in and goes, Oh my gosh, what is that? And I start dying laughing. I mean, I'm about to fall on the floor laughing. Best part is, we had like six other trips. We had to carry stuff in there, and it's like an airlock when those doors shut. So we had to walk through. Uh, I guarantee you, you will remember the production of a gas is the indication of a chemical reaction. Oh, that's hilarious. Did you know that's actually a method of memorization? Yeah, that's why I just told you of a nasty horror story on Mr. Hall. Yeah. Now, anybody in here that looks and says, Ew, Mr. Hall, you're gross. You fart too. Whatever. And your poop stinks, so don't act like you're better than me. I teach biology. I can say poop. All right, number three. <laughs> yeah, let's not, let's not really go out and tell them lies like that. I really don't teach that class. I have no idea what to Just ask. Yeah, he had a better shot at it than me. Just ask for my kids. He just read the PowerPoint. Do, do I teach anatomy? Did Mr. Painter teach anatomy? I have no idea. 
No, he literally read the PowerPoint and sent us the PowerPoint that none of us ever read. And then he like said, on page, blah, 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 you're going to have to paste on, so you might want to study. All right, number three. Number three is formation of. Hey, and this is a special word you never heard before. I'm going to put it in my terms, though. Can you tell us the term? Of a precipitate. So now, this is the thing. Precipitates are a special thing. So this is what kind of precipitate is, is a solid being formed or released. When mixing two substances together. So kind of like what this will look like is practically we will take two clear uh, solutions. In these two clear solutions, they just look like water. But then you mix one into the other. And as you mix it and it falls in, something solid is produced from it. From that solid production, that is a precipitate. The precipitate coming out is telling us that a reaction has took place. What's on? With glue and icon isolation. Never done that, so I don't know. Let's make slime. Yeah. You never made slime. Let's make ooblock. Wait, what are you making? Like, you know what? Your buddies. I did. The only way I can explain it to you is one of the reactions you're going to learn about is called a uh, replacement rela reaction. And what happens is something comes in and kicks an ion out. Why? If it kicks that ion out, that ion comes out in a solid formation, and the other one takes place. Whereas, yeah, a solid being formed or released. You go from two clear solutions, there's nothing solid in it, you mix two together, and you're like, oh, there's something solid in here now. Question. Similar to how blood reacts with oxygen and, and clots of Why does blood clots up? Similar. What? No. You guys will see it in here. Just give it time. Okay, that's the one you guys haven't got to see an example for. We have the elevation. I have no idea what that is, nor can I pronounce that. What? Ooblick. 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 Yes, it's from Dr. Seuss. It's a sheer thickening, non That's our lab. We're trying to make this your home. Okay. All right. <laughs> So this brings us into indications that a chemical reaction takes place. Then you have to worry about actually being able to represent a chemical reaction. So within this, you have two different types of chemical equations that we're going to talk about. So chemical equations. This is the part where I said something is not going to go away. No, that's coming. That's the that's remember how I said we're in the eye of the storm? And then it's like the second wall's coming through. The second wall that's gonna come in and wipe this class. That's when the mold conversions go back.
don't know. I don't All right. So with that is, you have two different types. So the first one we're going to talk about is the formula equation. We'll put it in blue because I think all of you will like the formula equation best. Trying to say that blue is her favorite color. Blue is just so. Are you color specifying? I, I yes. Yeah. It's so nice, and sweet, and really caring. So within this, the formula equation that you'll get. Okay. So like a perfect example of this is. Well, I can't use the words yet. We get that. It's like one of my favorite reactions that I. Uh, would love to do. Oh, it makes water. H2O. <laughs> Wouldn't H2O? No, because oxygen by itself is still. It's the balance there. Balance is there. So this is the formula equation. These are giving you the chemical formulas, which I think all of you in here would like a lot more compared to the other options that you have. So there is the word equation. And then the one that I think you all are going to hate, and this is where Mr. Hall said this is not leaving this class, that if you haven't got it, you need to get it. It's just an example of what a formula equation looks like. And now I'm giving you the word equation. The word equation uses words. Like names. Like nomenclature. Like let's Like this is hydrogen. Like this is like skew. <laughs> That's oxygen. I know what I'm doing today. I know what we're doing. And hydrogen and oxygen. You know what? We might as well just go and show it to you. I I shouldn't hold back. I apologize. I should have been about something else up here. And heat. Help. Delta. That represents heat. Yeah, Delta. 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 And some heat. It's warm water. Warm water. Makes water. I don't like warm water. Here's the point of this. You're going to have to be able to go back and forth with these. With these, I can give you word equations. And you're going to have to be able to go to the formula equation. Or you're going to have to be able to go from the formula equation to the word equation. Why is there a 2 in front of the H2O? This is the reason there's a 2 here in front of the H2O. It's something you're going to learn about in this class. Is within these chemical equations, the law of conservation of mass. Law of conservation of mass states, the mass of the reactants will be equal to the mass of the products. And vice versa, the mass of the products will be equal to the mass of the reactants. Because mass is conserved. So in this, whenever you're looking at this, if I left this like this over here, I have two hydrogens and one oxygen. But over here on this side, I have two hydrogens and two oxygen. So to change this, you can't put a two back here because if you put a two back here, you've now changed the chemical formula. But you can't do that. You've went from water to hydrogen peroxide and you don't want to drink that stuff, I promise you. So you just move that two in yeah. just in front of the H? Like, would that you can put a two in front of them. We will get to that later on. We're not how there. Do you know how, like, how to do it? If you give me a moment and let me keep going, I will show you. <laughs> So in this, 
the list of that. Going from the chemical equations, the word equations are crucially important, but also within this, I want you to understand the parts of a chemical equation. So here are the parts. Don't put it down. So the parts of a chemical equation. I'm going to write this as an abbreviated with a bunch of variables with it, but the point of it is I just want to show you what we think of it. So over here in the blue, So this is an example of a chemical equation, and I want you to get the parts of it, okay? Don't worry about what these things are standing for. These lowercase letters are just standing in for like these numbers that you see here, these large coefficients. And the large letters are standing in for what would be considered the chemical uh, formulas of those compounds. So like the hydrogen, oxygen, and water there. That's all that's standing in there and representing. This is what I want you to get what each one of these are. You have parts to a chemical equation. And in this class, I'm going to give you one side, I will tell you a type of reaction, and you have to predict what the other side will be. So in this, the left side, the side here in blue, we call these the reactants. This purple arrow here has a special meaning. It's not just there by chance. The proper definition of what that arrow means is yields. If you don't like yields, you would say goes to, produces. Goes to, produces. The right side, which is here in red, which is our products. I don't know if this will help you remember it or not, but for me, I remember chemical equations are based off all off of chemical reactions. For a reaction to take place, I must have reactants that will go to or yield products because I'm trying to produce something. Anything that you're looking at within your life, within reason, you're trying to produce something. And the part of stoichiometry that's going to come in later on is doing that very, very precisely with no waste. Okay? Any questions at this point? <coughs> awesome, you guys are doing great. Now, I want to say this to you just because uh, sometimes it helps to get a second person to work with you on something or explain something to you. And this may catch you off guard, it may not. Honestly, 
they didn't catch me off guard. There was somebody else here at the school that literally, she loves to balance equations. She literally, I was, it was last, two years ago, I was printing off a balancing equation worksheet in the teacher's lounge, and she looked at me and went, can I have this? And then can I come see if I'm right? I, I love this. And it was Miss Cole. So if you would like someone else to talk to you about balancing equations, by all means, go see Miss Cole. In this, we're going to give you a brief overview today. Tomorrow, we're going to go to tomorrow's lab. If we finish lab early, which is very likely, it shouldn't take you long to do the lab tomorrow, we'll go a little bit more in depth. Besides that, Monday, uh, if we don't get to do it tomorrow, we'll go more in depth with this balancing equations. And we'll give you the rules and the breakdown for it. So, in this perfect example is, uh, just going back to the one that I just threw up there, and I will say it was you, but then you had the question why I put the two there. So we had hydrogen, which is a diatomic, and oxygen yields water. Do we put the triangles like heat there all the like, every No, time? not every time. In this case, it takes heat to get this reaction to take place. There's different things that can go over top the arrow, and sometimes there's nothing needed to go over the arrow. <coughs> Alright, so in this, this is always what I like to do. And this is going to show you a very simplistic breakdown of what I'm looking and wanting. Please pardon the interruption. I need the following students to come to the office. Parker Ross, Jessica Everhart, Jay Cox, Julie Brown, Sarah Wilson, Jacob Lester, Faith Massey, Katie Elkins, Jordan Simpson. Okay. So in this, this is always what I like to do. I like to write down on both the reactant side and the product side the elements I have. So I literally will write down hydrogen and oxygen. Because those are the two that I have over here. Law of conservation of mass, which you have on the left, you should have on the right. In this case, you write down how many you have for that element on that side. So in this case, hydrogen, we have two because of the two down here with the hydrogen. For oxygen, we have two. <coughs> on the right side, on the product side, how many hydrogens? Two. How many oxygens? One. This is the thing. You should have the same number on the left as you do, that's the right. Here's the problem. You do not have the same number for the oxygen. Since you do not have the same number for the oxygens, you have to do something. This is the thing, I'm going to stress this. You cannot come in here and just throw a two back here and go, now we have two. If you do that, you have changed it. It is no longer hydrogen and oxygen produces water. You're saying hydrogen and oxygen produces hydrogen peroxide. That's wrong. You've completely changed the chemical. That's not good science. What you have that you can do are these, these placeholders in front. You absolutely can put numbers in front of there that will change the numbers for you. So in this case, I have one oxygen on the right and I have two on the left. These numbers will multiply. So if I put a two here, it's now changed my number of oxygen. Because I have two water molecules, which you're looking at here. For every one of these, I'll get two of this. And there's a one here, so two times one is two. So I now have two oxygens. Here's the thing. You have to be extremely careful. 
because not only you put this two in front here, not only does it change the oxygens, it changes the hydrogens as well. Anything that's in front, put a slash through it. Any any el add a any element that's in that molecule that's behind it, put a slash through it so you recalculate it. So in this case, you have a two here, two hydrogen. So like I said, it's four. Well, now you have to add a two to that one because they'll multiply to give you four. Now you got to add two over here because you're no longer balanced. You was balanced with the hydrogens, but now it's changed. You have two hydrogens on the reactant side, and you have four on the product side. So in this case, yeah, that's how I know how to do this because we've done it before. I think Miss Hope showed us this on the floor. <laughs> Are you serious? I think she did. Yes. I'm going to tell Miss Cole she's still my thumb. Because Houston said something about it. <laughs> so we had to do it. I really do not like Houston at all. <laughs> so in this, it's now changed. Now look, four hydrogens on the left, four hydrogens on the right. Two oxygens on the left, two oxygens on the right. You're balanced. Yes. What do you mean to change it? You'll never change it. Until you get to the five basic chemical equations I'm going to teach you. That's when you'll follow rules to predict. Besides that, if I'm asking you to balance something, you should never put a number back here. If you're balancing, numbers will always go in front. They'll never go inside the molecule. The molecule is set. Why what? So we will be able to know like what goes above the air, like the air, like heat. Yeah. You will. I'll give you little pieces of information that will help you. And also with it, what I'll do is um, I'll print you so that you guys don't feel like you got to write it all down. I'll print it for you so that you can see it and see what it means. I will let you know this. Um, I got mad at my chemistry teacher in high school because of how I learned to write my arrows like this. This is not truly really how things happen. But in this class, this is what is accepted and what people predict for you to do. So I'm fine if you put one arrow just going from the left to the right. That's fine. But I want you to be aware so whenever you get to college later on, this is not how life actually works. Because the reaction goes forward. But like 99% of the reactions we deal with can also go backwards. So it can go both ways. Like the two on the side instead of drawing two different lines, just have one line have them work. Yeah. Uh, you can, but in this, what I'm going to look at you and say do is just for this class, just do this. I'm sorry for the interruption, but if Mr. Whitten's third period class, at the bell, you want to report to the cafeteria. Whitten is with your collections book. Mr. Whitten's third period class at the bell, you want to report to the cafeteria with your collections book. Thank you. I thought she said that. So, so on this, this arrow, just going from left to right, just going from records, products in this class is what's expected and is accepted and is okay. So it's not like, I'm not making a mandatory that you got to get that right. So if we use I'm not, I'm not. Yeah, it's fine. I just want you to be aware of it. It doesn't always happen, but for the majority of the time, that's what happens. Because we'll probably won't get to it, but you're going to learn about the Chatelet's principles and all that. It's really cool. Like, you have to change. 
you can change not only the concentration of your reactants, but also the conditions that you find them in to give yourself a yield of something more. So like fertilizer, they use Le Chatelet's principle to get a lot of fertilizer produced. It's really interesting. If you're a nerd, like science like me. So tomorrow I will have the chemical symbols for you. Uh, you got the lab tomorrow, but besides that, pretty much I just want to keep working with balancing these equations. I don't want you walking down here feeling completely overwhelmed. I know I've thrown out a lot of new information at you. Pretty much, this is what you're looking at. I gave you three types. I feel like I'm in a side, like a sideshow crash course <laughs> chemistry video right now. And if you watch this video, you learned how to. Uh, three. Made predictions of uh, indications that a reaction has took place. Uh, so you learn three three different ways to tell whether a reaction is taking place. You have learned the parts of a chemical reaction. You have learned that chemical reactions can come in word formulas, and they can come in uh, equations. equations. There you go. Thank you. Um, uh, you can tell I'm not feeling great today. <coughs> and then in this, you've also learned about balancing chemical equations. The reason that we're balancing chemical equations is law of conservation of mass. So, just to keep rolling with this. Calcium chloride combined to make calcium chloride. Balance it. In this case, I'll give you a second, write down. So you have calcium and you have chlorine. So on the reactant side, how many calciums you got? One. How many chlorines? Two. On the product side, how many calciums? One. How many chlorines? Two. It's already balanced. It's already balanced. You don't have to put any coefficients whatsoever with it because these are exactly the same. I'm not going to get my hopes up because I've said I know what I've done on like the nomenclature and stuff. Yeah, the nomenclature, I was like, I know what I'm doing. Guys, yeah, the thing with nomenclature is a lot of things to balance. Like, I will be honest with you, in this in this unit, you have to know the five different types of reactions. You have to know when those reactions are being applied, and you have to know how to predict the products and what the reactants are for. But I know how to balance it. I think like the nomenclature is just like the polyatomic All right. So in this case, let's do a little bit. And so, to uh, yields to oh lord, see. All right, y'all bounce that one. This will be your last one.
All right. So in this one, it's a little bit more complex, even though it's hidden. It doesn't look as much complex. So in this case, what we're looking at is we have two chlorines. Uh, everything, the aluminum and the zincs are balanced, except for the chlorines are not balanced. And now that's going to change so, the whole thing. And it's going to jack everything up. Yep. Because this chlorine on this side is in a molecule or a compound, and this chlorine on this side is in a compound. So this is the thing. Whenever you've got something that's not easily divide, divisible, so it's not like a 2 and a 4 or a, a 3 and a 9. It's by common denominator. Or what I'll just do is I'll flip. So I'll take the 3 from this side and put in front here. And the two. And two from this side, my reactant side, and put over here. Because now, this has became six, two chlorines, six. And over here, I have three chlorines, two times three is six. But, you've changed the aluminum on this side, and you've changed the zinc on this side. The zinc over here now, there's one here, so that's a three. Aluminum over here, there's one, so that's two. But now your life is easier because aluminum and zinc is just left by themselves. So it's very easy to just balance it out, especially since there's one here. We just take the two from the right, throw here, and from the zinc over there by itself, three. We take the three from here and throw over there. See, I wasn't sure. If and I everything is now balanced in that. Is how we balance equations. Lab tomorrow? I wasn't sure that if that's how you did it, but I went ahead and did it.